families of faith around the world who attended the Shinchanji online seminar testimony on the parables of the secrets of heaven and their true meanings. Welcome. I am Kim Unam, who is the moderator for today. As Jesus said in Matthew 24, this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all nations. At this time, the parables of the secrets of heaven and their true meanings are being preached to the whole world through these YouTube videos. After hearing the words that are so clear and logical, which have not been heard anywhere else on the planet, pastors from all over the world have signed MOUs with Shinchanji Church of Jesus, continuing active exchanges with each other. This shows the way of life is opened to all people through the promised pastor who has seen and heard everything, transcending borders and languages at this time when the prophecies of the New Testament are fulfilled. When you understand the true meaning of the parable that has been hidden as the secret of heaven, I hope the understanding becomes an irreplaceable food for eternal life in your hearts, and you have a precious time in which the hope of heaven can grow. Then, before we begin the lecture, let us pray together with the same heart. Holy Father God, to whom we are grateful and thankful, today we especially thank you for the grace that you have allowed to us to preach to the whole world through the Shinchanji online seminar series, Testimony on the Parables of the Secrets of Heaven and Their True Meanings. Please provide your grace to all of the pastors and all believers in the world who have come to this place with an earnest heart to understand the Word of God so that their hearts can be filled with your abundant grace. Please pour out the Holy Spirit boundlessly on the instructor who testifies to the Word and give understanding to all believers who hear these words limitlessly. I believe that it will be a time filled with God's Holy Spirit and grace. Father God, may you be with us from the beginning until the end of the time and receive glory. We pray all of these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. Yes. Today, we will have a lesson with the title, Lesson 3, The Figurative Language of the Secrets of the Kingdom of Heaven. In Mark chapter 4, verse 11, Jesus said, The secret of the kingdom of heaven has been given to you, but to those on the outside, everything is said in parables. If you are a believer who hopes for heaven, if you are a member of God's family, shouldn't it be necessary to know the secrets of the kingdom of God? Through the revealed word today, I hope you will gain a great understanding and have a time of grace in which your spirit is quenched through the sweet rain. We will have the instructor Chung Duk Sup of the Busan James tribe who will deliver the word of God. Hello, pastors, seminarians, and saints who hope and wish for the kingdom of heaven. Welcome to the Shinchanji Online Seminar. I am a center instructor, Chung Duk Sup, and I was taught by the tribe leader of the Busan James tribe among the 12 tribes in Shinchanji. And our tribe leader had learned from the Shinchanji chairman, Li Man He. I hope that you will listen well while the parables of the secrets of heaven are unraveled today and we will have a precious time to become one together in God. Did you listen well to the basics of the Bible last time? Today, we are going to share the word with this title of The Figurative Language of the Secrets of the Kingdom of Heaven. Let's start today's lesson by reading the verse about the parables together. The disciples came to him and asked, Why do you speak to the people in parables? He replied, 
The knowledge of the secrets of the kingdom of heaven has been given to you, but not to them. Amen. In these verses, we can see that Jesus had told the secrets of the kingdom of heaven through parables. He had spoken in this way. Since it is the secrets of heaven, all people on earth who hope for heaven must clearly understand the meaning of the parables that are speaking about the secrets of the kingdom of heaven. And I hope that you will listen carefully to the parables today and let us all be the children of heaven. Let's take a look at the main points of today's lesson. For the main contents of today's lesson, first, we will look at the reasons why you cannot understand the word even if you read it. Second, why did Jesus speak in parables? And third, we'll learn about the secrets of heaven recorded in the four Gospels and in the book of Revelation. And fourth, when and through whom will we see the reality of the secrets of the kingdom of heaven that were sealed in parables? And fifth, what are the results of those who understand the parables and those who do not? And lastly, number six, we will see the examples of parables one by one. I hope that you will listen well how the parables of the secrets of heaven are unraveled today, understand the kingdom of heaven correctly, and let us all be one in the true God. The books of the Bible that all Christians have on earth contain the same words. However, there are many things that are difficult to understand even when we read the Bible. For example, in Revelation chapter 13, there is a beast that comes out of the sea, and it looks like some beasts that live on the land. When you read these verses, are you able to understand well? Why did such land animals, such as a lion, a bear, and a leopard, all come out of the sea? And in Revelation chapter 9, there are the horses that kill one-third of the people. The heads of these horses, it says, are on their tails. Do these kinds of horses exist in this world? As such, there are some things in the Bible that are difficult to understand. So then, is the Bible wrong? In John chapter 1 verse 1, it says that the Word is God. So there is no way that God would give us incorrect or wrong words, right? The reason why it is difficult for us to understand the word is because these words in the Bible are written in parables. It is said that when Jesus spoke to his disciples, he spoke in parables, and he did not say anything without using a parable. This word parable is made up of these words, comparison and perceiving. And this Latin root of the word parabola also means comparison. Therefore, the specific characteristics of a similar object is used to describe another object. There is a phrase that we're familiar with that is used in our everyday lives. We may say someone is cunning like a snake and someone who is innocent like a dove. And we use such figurative expressions within our daily lives as well. And even in the words of this Bible, there are many parts that are written in parables like this. The beasts in Revelation chapter 13 that we had seen earlier, as well as the horses in Revelation chapter 9, are all objects of prophecy written in parables within the book of Revelation. Now, the second reason why we do not understand this word, even if we read it, is because the prophecies did not come true, and therefore the realities that were fulfilled did not appear yet. This book of Revelation is a book of prophecy which recorded the events that must soon take place. 
And that is why there is a time when it must be accomplished and fulfilled. Let's read the words of Habakkuk chapter 2, verses 2 to 3 together. Then the Lord replied, Write down the revelation and make it plain on tablets so that a herald may run with it. For the revelation awaits an appointed time. It speaks of the end and will not prove false. Though it linger, wait for it. It will certainly come and will not delay. Amen. In this way, There are times when the prophecies will be fulfilled, and only when they are fulfilled and the reality appears would we be able to tell the true meaning of the parables that have been written once we are able to see this fulfilled reality. Then when will the realities of these prophecies appear? When the prophecy is fulfilled, we will know it by looking at the actual entities of the parables, right? For this reason, We must understand that the prophecy of the secrets of heaven cannot be understood literally, but that it is a parable. Then, what is the reason for speaking about the secrets of the kingdom of heaven in parables? First, it is said that he spoke in parables to fulfill the words of the Old Testament prophets. Let's read the words of Psalm 78, verses 1 and 2 together. O my people, hear my teaching. Listen to the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth in parables. I will utter hidden things, things from of old. Amen. This is a poem of Asaph recorded in the Psalms, and it is what God had foretold through the prophet Asaph about what would happen in the future. God is prophesying that He will tell the secrets of the kingdom of heaven in parables, and this prophecy is fulfilled through the first coming of Jesus. This time, let's read the words of Matthew chapter 13, verses 34 and 35. Jesus spoke all these things to the crowd in parables. He did not say anything to them without using a parable. So was fulfilled what was spoken through the prophet, I will open my mouth in parables, I will utter things hidden since the creation of the world. Amen. The hidden things that Jesus spoke of here refer to the secrets of the kingdom of heaven. And he said that the reason for telling the secrets of the kingdom of heaven in parables was to fulfill the prophecy of Psalm 78. In other words, Jesus spoke to his disciples only in parables in order to fulfill God's prophecy to speak about the secrets of the kingdom of heaven in parables. Then, if there were times when he had spoken in parables, wouldn't there also be a time when he would not speak in parables anymore and clearly reveal these realities? In John chapter 16, verse 25, Jesus said that he was speaking in parables at the first coming, but that there will be a time when he no longer speaks in figurative language, but will speak about everything plainly. When would that time be? It would be the time of the second coming of Jesus when he comes again and fulfills all of the prophecies. So there is a time to speak in parables, and there is a time when it will be spoken plainly. Then, until Jesus comes again and explains everything plainly, no one will know the meaning of these parables, right? If anyone says, I know the meaning, without knowing whether the prophecy has been fulfilled or even when the time to tell plainly is, then isn't that person telling a lie? If you are a believer who hopes for heaven, you should be able to clearly know and distinguish these truths from the lies. The second reason for speaking in parables is because it is the secrets of the kingdom of heaven. Let's read Matthew chapter 13, verses 10 through 11. 
The disciples came to him and asked, Why do you speak to the people in parables? He replied, The knowledge of the secrets of the kingdom of heaven has been given to you, but not to them. Amen. When the disciples asked why Jesus had spoken in parables, Jesus said that he was hiding the secrets of the kingdom of heaven in parables because they were secrets. We cannot randomly disclose our secrets to anybody, can we? For entering a house, a lock is installed with a passcode to prevent anyone from entering that house. Those who know this passcode can enter the house, so you shouldn't let anybody know this passcode. So who can know this? The family members living in that household will need to know this passcode. However, a thief or an enemy of the family should not know this passcode, correct? In the same way, the secrets of the kingdom of heaven should be known only by the children of the kingdom of heaven who are the members of the heavenly family, and the children of Satan, the enemy of God, must not enter the kingdom of heaven, so to them it is hidden in parables. Next, the third reason why Jesus had spoken in parables is that if the enemy learns the secrets of the kingdom of heaven in the prophecy, the prophecy may be prevented from being fulfilled or abused. In the words of Matthew chapter 13, verses 10 through 11, Jesus said that there are those who have been granted the secrets of the kingdom of heaven, and there are those who are not. And to you, the disciples of Jesus, it said, they had been granted the knowledge to understand the secrets of the kingdom of heaven, but those who are called as they are not permitted to understand the secrets. As such, depending on whether or not you have been granted the knowledge of the secrets of the kingdom of heaven, there is a division of two affiliations, the you or the them. So what kind of affiliation do those people have who are called they, that they are not allowed to have the secrets of heaven? God and Satan have been fighting one another in this war to occupy over this global village for 6,000 years. God's position is to recover the global village that had been taken away by the devil. And Satan's position is to prevent God from restoring the global village that he has occupied. In fact, during a physical war as well, people set a passcode that only allies can understand in order to prevent the enemy from invading. And this passcode must be kept hidden from the enemy. You can think of it in the same logic. In the Old Testament, in Micah chapter 5, verse 2, it was prophesied that Jesus would be born in Bethlehem. Since the place where Jesus was to be born, was recorded in the Bible, Satan tried to harm Jesus by killing all the babies born in Bethlehem through Herod, who was the king of Judea at that time. By this, you can tell how Satan tries to disrupt God's works. Therefore, only when God hides the things he will accomplish in the future from the enemy Satan will he be victorious in this war. Therefore, in order to prevent the enemy, Satan, from knowing the secrets of the kingdom of heaven, he hides these secrets of heaven through parables from those who belong to Satan. In general, when we talk about parables or analogies, it is a method that we use to explain something in a way that is easier to understand. But it is said that he hid the secrets of the kingdom of heaven in parables. So some of you may wonder whether all the parables in the Bible were written to make it difficult to understand. That is why 
You need to distinguish within the Bible between the parables in the books of history or instruction and those in the books of prophecy. There are parts of parables in the books of history or instruction in the Bible that are said to make it easier to understand. However, when it is spoken in parables within the books of prophecy, they were recorded in difficult parables so that those who belong to Satan, the enemy, would not be able to understand them. In particular, the four Gospels and the words of Revelation are full of parables under the guise of people and places. In the four Gospels and the book of Revelation, Jesus told the prophecies that would be fulfilled in the future in parables, and He hid them as the secrets of the kingdom of heaven. If you do not know the true meaning of these parables, then you cannot understand the Bible nor the true will of God. Therefore, only by perceiving the true meaning of these parables can we know and see the kingdom of heaven. In Matthew chapter 13, out of the four Gospels, Jesus taught the kingdom of heaven through the parables of the seed, yeast, treasure, pearl, and net. Then, doesn't it mean that we can become the children of heaven only if we know the meanings of these parables? Some people say that they heard all places that teach parables are heresies. If that is the case, how about Jesus? Is Jesus also a heretic since he had taught parables? Everyone? Is the person who does not know the parable a heresy or a cult? Or is Jesus who taught the parables a cult? Are you able to explain the meaning of these words that Jesus had spoken of in parables? If you do not know, shouldn't you give an ear to those who say that they know them and then discern, instead of just blaspheming them as heretics? I trust that all of you who are listening to this lecture are sensible and wise, so that you will listen to this and judge what is true and what is false. Only when we perceive the true meanings of these parables that Jesus had given in Matthew chapter 13 can we know and see the kingdom of heaven. Also, in the prophecy of the book of Revelation in the New Testament, in which Jesus recorded what must soon take place through his disciple John, you can see the secrets of the kingdom of heaven hidden in parables. There are the mystery of the seven stars and the seven golden lampstands in Revelation chapter 1 verse 20, the mystery of the beast with seven heads and ten horns in Revelation chapter 17 verse 7, and in Revelation chapter 10, verse 7, the mystery of the seventh trumpet. Then if we do not understand the meanings of these parables, we cannot understand the will of God, nor can we recognize the reality that has been made and appeared. Do you really think that these seven stars and seven golden lampstands are literally the stars in the universe and physical lampstands? And this beast with seven heads and ten horns is not any kind of animal you may see in a zoo. Do you really think that the seventh trumpet refers to a trumpet that is blown by people? In today's religious world, where would these secrets of heaven be clearly testified? These secrets of heaven were not spoken in literal terms, but they were spoken in parables. If you are a true believer, you must understand the meanings of the parables that Jesus had prophesied about the kingdom of heaven within the book of Revelation. So at this time, let's find out when and through whom we can see the reality of the secrets of the kingdom of heaven that were once sealed in parables.
The secrets of the kingdom of heaven, sealed with parables, are fulfilled, realized, and understood when the prophecies are fulfilled and the reality is revealed. In John chapter 1 verse 14, it said that the Word became flesh and this was Jesus. So what does it mean for the Word to become flesh? That means that Jesus, who was recorded within the words of prophecy in the Old Testament, appeared as the physical reality through the fulfillment of the prophecies. God made the prophet Daniel record the future events that would take place in the last days. But Daniel also did not understand the parables and the secrets of the future events. So he asked the angel how the results of all these prophecies would be fulfilled and revealed. And the angel answered, These will be closed up and sealed until the time of the end. And approximately 500 years later, the prophecies written through Daniel were fulfilled through Jesus. Although no one was able to understand the secrets of the kingdom of heaven recorded through Daniel because it was recorded in parables, the disciples of Jesus were able to understand clearly by seeing the reality that was fulfilled through Jesus. So, in the words of 1 John chapter 1, verses 1 and 2, the disciples said that Jesus was the word of life from the beginning, which they have seen with their eyes and their hands have touched. This means that the word that God had prophesied had become the flesh. Likewise, Jesus, who came at the first coming, hid the secrets of the kingdom of heaven as the prophecies of the New Testament, just as God had instructed and he went away. In John chapter 14, verse 29, Jesus had given the prophecies in parables, and he told us to believe when the prophecies come true. Then, isn't there a time when the prophecies of the New Testament that were spoken in parables will come true and be revealed clearly? Let's read the words of John chapter 16, verse 25 together. Though I have been speaking figuratively, a time is coming when I will no longer use this kind of language, but will tell you plainly about my Father. Amen. Then, now that He has promised to speak plainly when the prophecy comes true, that means the time that they are told plainly is when the prophecies are fulfilled. All the secrets of the kingdom of heaven that Jesus had prophesied in the four Gospels and in the book of Revelation are realized as the reality of the fulfillment and is revealed at the time when the book of Revelation is fulfilled. And in this way, the true meaning of the parables that Jesus had spoken about, they are now being clearly testified to all of you. When Jesus gave a prophecy, didn't He give it for us to believe when all of these things come true? So please listen and verify to see whether today is a time when the reality of the secrets of heaven that have been hidden can be testified and the true meanings of the parables can be understood. And if it is a time, I hope that you will believe and be saved. I believe that you may have wondered about the true meaning of the parables and the secrets of the kingdom of heaven, just as the parables of heaven in Matthew chapter 13 and the mysteries of Revelation that we have spoken about. I hope that you will listen to and understand the true meaning of the parables one by one through the words of the testimony on the parables of the secrets of heaven and their true meanings that will continue on. And I hope that you will have a precious time to confirm the secrets of the kingdom of heaven that were prophesied in the four Gospels and Revelation. Now let's see through whom we can understand the parables when the book of Revelation is fulfilled. In the New Testament prophecies, it is prophesied that an angel or a messenger will be sent by Jesus. In the words of Psalms 119, verse 130, 
It says that the unfolding of your words gives light. It gives understanding to the simple. Then, in order to clearly testify to this prophecy of the New Testament, which was sealed with parables, shouldn't there be someone who unfolds the word to give this light and this understanding? It is said that in John chapter 16, verses 12 to 14, that when the Spirit of truth comes, He will guide us into the truth. And in John chapter 14, verse 26, the Spirit of truth will teach and remind us of everything that Jesus had said. At this time, what Jesus was talking about was a parable about the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. It was sealed as parables for 2,000 years and no one could understand. But today, as Revelation, the prophecy of the New Testament is fulfilled, the realities appear and the Spirit of Truth comes and reveals the meanings of the parables. But how can a spirit without a body, without a mouth or a voice, explain the meanings of the parables to our ears? In John chapter 14, verse 17, it is said that the Spirit of Truth will be in a person and will work through that person. Then, today, when Revelation, the New Testament prophecy is fulfilled, the person with the Spirit of Truth will see and hear and know the realities of the secrets of the kingdom of heaven when the prophecies are revealed and fulfilled. Then, let's find out who is the person that has the Holy Spirit who sees, hears, and testifies to the reality of the fulfillment of the book of Revelation through Revelation chapter 22, verse 16. Let's read Revelation chapter 22, verse 16. I, Jesus, have sent my angel to give you this testimony for the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright morning star. Amen. At the time of the fulfillment of the book of Revelation, as Jesus promised in John chapter 16, verse 25, He will send His angel and His messenger to the churches and clearly testify of everything that He had said in parables. If that is the case, is it not that there is no one else who knows the meaning of the parables or who can testify to the reality that has been fulfilled except for the angel or the messenger that Jesus sends to the churches? This is something that only the witness who has seen and heard can know. Even if one may be a pastor or a doctor of theology, this secret of the kingdom of heaven cannot be known without seeing or hearing it. And that is why the prophecy, which is a secret of heaven, must be understood through understanding the parables, not taken literally as is. I hope that all of you who are listening to today's lecture will find out who this messenger sent by Jesus is. Understand the reality of the secrets of heaven that are witnessed through the messenger of Jesus and become the children of heaven. Now, let's look at the consequences of those who understand the parables and those who do not. In Matthew chapter 22, verse 29, Jesus speaks about those who misunderstand the Bible and the Word of God. Likewise, if you do not understand the meaning of the parables of the New Testament, but see them literally and therefore misunderstand them, the result will be the difference between heaven and hell. Let's read the words of Mark chapter 4, verses 10 through 12. When he was alone, the twelve and the others around him asked him about the parables. He told them, 
The secrets of the kingdom of God have been given to you, but to those on the outside, everything is said in parables, so that they may be ever seeing but never perceiving, and ever hearing but never understanding, otherwise they might turn and be forgiven. Amen. It is said that although the secrets of the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God, were given to the disciples who are the children of heaven, it was not given to the outsiders, that is, to the children of hell outside of heaven, and everything was kept in parables to them. Then, the children of heaven who understand the meaning of the parables and receive the secrets of the kingdom of heaven, receive forgiveness of sins and salvation. But those who do not understand the meaning of the parables become outsiders, the children of the devil, so they would not receive forgiveness of sins nor salvation. Depending on whether you understand the parables or not, the results are drastically different, right? Today, the sons of heaven, born of God's seed, appear according to the promise in the book of Revelation, and there is the work of harvest as well as the creation of the twelve tribes through the work of sealing. Even though all of these take place and people see them, but they still do not understand, it is because they do not know the reality of the prophecies and the parables. Then, if we are the same Christians, born of the same seed of Jesus. We should not fight each other without knowing the secrets of the kingdom of heaven and be outsiders, but rather we should realize and understand the secrets of the kingdom of heaven and be a family together. Dear pastors and saints around the world, God wants all religions to believe in the promise of the new covenant and be one in the true God. If religions become one, all wars on the earth will cease and there will be freedom, peace, and love. And God in heaven, who had departed in the past, will come again. I sincerely hope that you will come to understand the meaning of the parables and understand the reality of the secrets of heaven through this online seminar, the testimony on the parables of the secrets of heaven and their true meanings. At this time, let's take a look at how the parables in the Bible are recorded and what their meanings are. First, let's look at the contents of the parables through objects. Let's read Isaiah chapter 28, verse 16. So this is what the Sovereign Lord says. See, I lay a stone in Zion, a tested stone, a precious cornerstone for a sure foundation. The one who trusts will never be dismayed. Amen. Amen. Here, the prophet Isaiah prophesied that a stone was laid on Mount Zion, which is a tested stone and a foundation stone. He also said that whoever believes in this stone will not be dismayed. So, is there really such a stone that, if you believe, you would not be dismayed? Then, what does that stone look like? And there are so many stones on a mountain. So how do we find the one that God has laid? In this way, if you only think of the stones in the prophecies as literal and physical stones, no matter how long you study the Bible, you would not be able to understand its meaning. Then, let's check what kind of heavenly secret God had hidden in this stone by reading 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 4 to 6. As you come to Him, the living stone, rejected by men but chosen by God and precious to Him, you also, like living stones, are being built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. 
For in scripture, it says, See, I lay a stone in Zion, a chosen and precious cornerstone, and the one who trusts in him will never be put to shame. Amen. In the book of Apostle Peter, we see that Jesus is the living stone rejected by men, but chosen by God and precious to Him. It was actually Jesus. The stone recorded in Isaiah's prophecy that said that if you believe, you would not be dismayed, it was about Jesus. Isn't this amazing? The stone mentioned in parables in the Old Testament prophecy was Jesus who would appear at the first coming when the prophecy is fulfilled, and Jesus was the secret of the kingdom of heaven. Next, let's look at the parables through people. Let's read Isaiah chapter 61, verse 1. The Spirit of the Sovereign Lord is on me. Because the Lord has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives, and release from darkness for the prisoners. Amen. It is recorded as if the prophet Isaiah preached the gospel by being anointed by God and receiving the Holy Spirit. But if you go to Luke chapter 4, verses 17 to 21, it is testified that Jesus is the one who was anointed by God and received the Holy Spirit. This parable was given under the guise of the prophet Isaiah. Next is a parable through animals. In the words of Deuteronomy chapter 25 verse 4, it is said not to muzzle an ox while it is treading out the grain. However, if you look at the words of 1 Corinthians chapter 9 verses 9 to 10, God's missionaries, like Paul, are compared to as oxen. And in Song of Songs, chapter 2, verse 15, it is said to catch the foxes that ruin the vineyards. But if you look at Ezekiel, chapter 13, verse 4, the foxes are compared to as the false prophets. Next, let's look at the parables through historical events. The two wives of Abraham in the book of Genesis are compared to two covenants as seen in Galatians chapter 4 verses 21 to 24. And the tabernacle that Moses had made by seeing the things of heaven were given as figurative, in other words, a parable as seen in Hebrews chapter 9 verse 9. Let's read Hebrews chapter 9 verse 9 together. This is an illustration for the present time, indicating that the gifts and sacrifices being offered were not able to clear the conscience of the worshiper. Amen. Likewise, the historical events of the Old Testament were also given as parables, and you can see that the secrets of the kingdom of heaven is hidden inside of them. Finally, Let's check the parables through the names of geographical locations. Let's read Revelation chapter 11, verse 8. Their bodies will lie in the street of the great city, which is figuratively called Sodom and Egypt, where also their Lord was crucified. Amen. Sodom, Egypt, and Golgotha where Jesus was crucified. If you think of these as the names of the actual places, then you cannot understand the true meaning of the Bible. It is to be seen as a spiritual metaphor. Until now, we have looked at the examples of the parables in the Bible. And so, let us summarize today's content through the conclusion. 
Today, this is the age in which the secrets of the kingdom of heaven, the prophecies of the book of Revelation, became flesh and their realities are being proclaimed. 2,000 years ago, Jesus promised that when the time comes, He will tell the reality of the parables plainly without speaking figuratively. And since the meaning of the parables that were prophesied is announced as promised, if one believes and understands the true meaning and realities of the parables, the person will go to heaven. But if one does not believe, then that person will go to hell. Now is a time to reveal these parables clearly according to the promise of Jesus. And the fact that we clearly testify is because what was said in parables have become realities. The meaning of the parable of the secret of heaven, the new covenant or new promise that we must believe, can be known by only the one who has seen and heard it. So let us all be those who participate in the heaven we desire by understanding the true meaning of the secrets of the kingdom of heaven hidden in parables. Amen. Next time, you will hear about elementary lesson 4, the seeds, fields, trees, and birds. Next time, the instructor will be a greater and more talented instructor than me, so the lecture will be very fun. We hope that you will join us next time to receive grace and to be moved. Now finally, I hope we shout together, we are one, that we show that we are one in God and in Jesus. I will say, we are one, then please raise your finger like this and shout together. We are one in God and Jesus. We are one. Now let us pray and end. Holy Father God, to whom we are grateful, thank you for your grace that today again you have opened this seminar the testimony on the parables of the secrets of heaven and their true meanings, that through your love you have gathered us to make us the children of the kingdom of heaven. Please, Father God, govern the hearts of all those who have attended so that we can understand and believe in the parables of the secrets of heaven that were testified today so that we can believe and be saved. Please grant the blessings physically and spiritually to the children who came to hear these secrets of heaven even in the midst of our busy schedules and guide us so that we can continue to participate in the upcoming seminars. All this we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you for listening all the way until the end. The appearance of heaven is compared to the way people are farming and working. What is important is that the heaven that we believers hope for is hidden within this. Whether I am really born of God's seed or of the devil's seed, Shouldn't we look back and think for ourselves? Through the word of truth that we are listening to, we must strive to become true believers who can reach heaven and eternal life. Amen. Yes, next Monday's seminar will be held under the title of the figurative seed, field, tree, and bird. The time is the same as today at 10 a.m. So I hope that everyone will be able to attend and enter heaven that we hope for. The Shincheonji Online Seminar, Testimony on the Parables of the Secrets of Heaven and Their True Meanings, is being broadcasted simultaneously in 24 languages around the world through the official YouTube channel of the Shincheonji Church of Jesus. Currently, many pastors and seminary schools that have heard this message have signed an MOU with Shincheonji and keep biblical and cultural exchanges.
In addition to the message you heard today, if you have any further questions or inquiries about the Shincheonji Church of Jesus and its doctrine, please contact the representative number of each tribe shown on the screen. We will kindly guide you in detail. There are numerous religions and churches on earth. However, since God is the word of the beginning, God is only with the place where there is the true word of promise. Families of heaven who long for God and the word, just as God is one, there is one Bible, and our hope for heaven and eternal life is one. I hope that you and I all come into the Word, become one family who give lights to the whole world with the light of Christians. Thank you to everyone who came to this place today with a pure heart to understand the Word of God. Lastly, I will close the Shincheonji Online Seminar with the prayer the Lord has taught us. Let us pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we have forgiven those who sinned against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Yes, I pray that all of you who have joined together will always be filled with God's grace abundantly. Thank you. Thank you.